Hi, I'm Dr. David Cody, and I'm going to be taking you through the demonstration of how to examine the hip. With the patient lying as flat as possible, the first thing we're going to do is to look from the end of the bed for things such as symmetry. If there's a fractured neck of femur, for example, one leg may be shortened and externally rotated. Any obvious leg length discrepancy could also be seen, but this could be then checked for using a tape measure. So for this, I'm going to palpate over the anterior iliac crest and measure down to the medial malleolus of the ankle. Just again on this side of the deal. And they're nice and equal. So if there's a difference in those two measurements, that may be due to a real leg length discrepancy, such as loss of joint space in the knee or loss of joint space in the hip, leading to a shortened limb. The other thing that may be causing it might be a fixed flexion deformity of the joint, which we're going to examine for when we stand the patient up. Now I'm going to have a further look and feel of the hip itself. So for this, we need to expose the patient as much as we can, which is sometimes limited by their clothing, but we're trying to have a good look at the outside of the hip, particularly for scars that might be overlying the hip joint. And then I'm going to palpate down over the greater trochanter for any tenderness. I'll also have a feel in the joint line itself, any pain there? No. Next we're going to go on to movement. So for this we're going to do full flexion of the hip. Can you bend your knee all the, all the way up and take it as far as you can to your chest. And then we're going to do internal rotation and external rotation of the hip flexed when the knee is also at 90 degrees. Both sides should be compared obviously and then we're going to move on to Thomas's test. This is a, an assessment for fixed flexion deformity at the contralateral hip. So I'm going to examine Adil's uh, left hip, but I'm going to be moving his right hip. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put my hand under his back. And as I lift this right leg, his lumbar spine is pushing down into my hand and I know that his lumbar lordosis is removed. So further movement of this hip is going to force the pelvis to tilt and that, if there's a fixed flexion deformity, will lift this leg up off the couch. So as I do this, Adil's left hip is staying on the couch, and this indicates a negative Thomas's test. If it was positive, this left leg would raise up off the couch. Trendelenburg's test involves the patient standing alternately on one leg alone. It assesses the hip and gluteal strength of the side that they're standing on. In a negative test, the pelvis remains level. In a positive test, the pelvis will dip on the contralateral side. So I often find uh, for older patients that they struggle to stand on one leg and it's useful to stand in front of them and ask them to hold their hands very gently and then stand alternately on one leg. So if you could stand on your right leg and then stand on your left leg, that's great. So function is assessed by asking the patient to walk. A waddling gait may be a sign of hip or proximal muscle weakness. Can I just see you walk? And back. Okay, thank you.